I said, I'm Madhavan Srinivasan. I work for IBM at Linux Technology Center. So today's presentation is about uh, how to expose some of the processor hazard data via perf to user space. So what are the plumbings that we could need, we may need, and how we can um, uh, get it done and things and with a um, sample implementation in power. So. So to start with, uh, I give a, wanted to give a brief uh, introduction about what is uh, what uh, its process pipeline is, uh, what are the uh, issues that you are going to, what uh, issues we are seeing, how that could in impact the uh, stall cycles, which impacts the workload, and then how we uh, uh, narrow it down, or how do we uh, get those data from the hardware PMU that a different platform provides, and expose that via Perf APIs and. Uh, uh, finally, I want to close with uh, sample screenshots of different tools, automations that we did, things in there. So, instruction cycle. So, the basic uh, instruction pipeline uh, says that uh, we have a, a fetch uh, unit which fetches the upcode. It's uh, then it uh, uh, decodes to know what kind of what class of instruction it is, uh, whether it's a load store branch or not, or whatever branch. So, it's a load store or ALU or things in there, and then uh, it then goes and fetches the operands, or operands could be the registers of memory, and then it start uh, executing it in the execute in the logic, and finally it goes back and writes the results either in the memory or into the register store. So this is the set of basic uh, uh, instruction pipeline that we have uh, read about and uh, in today's uh, process cycles are, uh, process are much more advanced and sophisticated where they have more, um, uh, more uh, advanced uh, sophisticated pipeline or super scalar uh, um, uh, data. So one thing is that they have multiple uh, parallel executions. They also uh, uh, have multiple stages within the executions. And uh, with uh, speculation and out of order execution uh, in there, so this all try to see whether we can improve our uh, instructions per cycle uh, in the process, thereby we can achieve um, more of a throughput with the common processor, with the workload and things in there. So, but, uh, this, uh, this is a sample example of how the current uh, Power 9 generation works and uh, uh, how, uh, so this, you can see there is a pre decode. We have a branch slice which uh, talks about uh, whether the speculation, what direction we have to take. It has multiple ALUs uh, and it goes back and writes the data to different ALU and then it does uh, store forwarding things. So real, uh, all this sophistication gets you uh, to the point where we can improve our uh, instructions throughput by seeing that we, we reduce the uh, stall cycles so that the application directly impacts and improves the performance in there, right? But uh, it's not, in reality, we don't get uh, the uh, idea of we uh, having uh, a nominal rate of uh, instruction per cycle of one. So that's kind of uh, the ideal goal where uh, everything will look like. So what we want to do in there, but uh, because of different um, uh, pipeline issues, like uh, if the pipeline is not balanced, I mean, if the different units have different uh, stages in there and pipeline in different combinations, then you are going to have different uh, 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 cycles uh, duration and you have to balance it out and you have to do that. And uh, there are uh, cases where you have to have uh, uh, instructions which cannot uh, go forward because it was waiting for either for the data or it's waiting for uh, the previous execution uh, instruction to uh, give it the data out. So all this going to increase the wait cycle in the processor to execute the instruction. So whenever there is a wait cycle, it actually uh, reduces your uh, instructions per cycle ratio and which incurs, which in turn reduces the workload performance in there. So primarily some of uh, these uh, areas where this could potentially be happen is uh, the hazards is what we call, and uh, that is primarily the reason for reducing uh, the instructions per cycle. So what are hazards? Hazards are nothing but uh, uh, instruction uh, which uh, stops the next instruction to execute in a desiccated cycle. So uh, it uh, has, we basically uh, categorize that as uh, three major uh, categories. One is uh, execution, um, I mean, uh, the structural level, which is nothing but where the uh, two or more instructions trying to get the same hardware at the same time. So at this point, it has to uh, stall or it has to wait the further on to uh, complete and write back and so that it, this can start executing in there. 
and then comes the next which is the control hazard where this is more of a, a conditioned loop predicting saying that okay this is the direction we are going to take and start fetching from there and if the branch misses then it's a penalty where we have to go and fetch totally a different direction and get it back in there so we could hide some of these uh, because we have a lot of out of our executions and uh, we have a lot of in flight instructions where we can actually hide some of these latencies in there but uh, still some of in some cases if the data is coming from a uh, say away from memory uh, then it will show up in your uh, uh, profiling things in there and finally the data hazards are the ones which has a lot of dependencies from the instruction so instructions going forward so yeah um, uh, so what we can use and how the hardware can help here so um, ibm has ibm power has uh, a sampling mechanism where it can um, mark an instruction and uh, collect data out of it. And when you say mark an instruction, you can actually look through the uh, instruction throughout the lifestyle, lifetime in the pipeline. So this gives you a lot of information of what are the kind of hazards it went in, whether it had um, uh, stalls, whether it had uh, hazards in case of uh, issuing, or it has uh, hazards in case of executing it, where it was waiting for so many things. So uh, all this information is possible to, and it provides uh, these information in three set of registers. Uh, the uh, instruction uh, event register is the one which gives you a lot of uh, mapping in case of data from, uh, say, whether it is from uh, um, um, the register which provides the information for uh, these uh, hazards conditions. And uh, AMD also has something called IBS instruction based sampling, which um, primarily gives you uh, two kinds of, uh, you can categorize that in two kinds of ways. One is the fetch uh, uh, data, where it actually gives you what are the fetch, uh, whether the fetch went in fine, whether there was a uh, uh, cancellation. In that case, what is the cycles from fetch to complete? And uh, the next set of, uh, next category of IBS uh, information is that it actually gives you out information about how the op executed. So hop execution gives you information about whether uh, it was uh, it had any decache miss, whether it had any uh, uh, TLB misses, whether it had information, whether it had any stalls in there. So uh, the information IBS provides has uh, some similarities in there, so uh, which can be connected to get the data in case of hazards. So uh, now why perf, right? So uh, perf is the community tool and it is most the ecosystem users and it also provides you uh, plumbing for hardware monitor, performance monitoring unit. So that gives you information about how we hardware is behaving. So that, with, uh, apart from that, it also gives you information on how, uh, I mean, it gives you generate reports and we can look at it for annotating the instruction sequence and things in there. So it's lightweight and fast and it's a lot more convenient. So why add other information in Perf, right? So Perf today gives you, gives you information about exporting uh, memory sampling. So uh, Perf today can get you uh, how a memory um, instruction went in, uh, uh, memory instruction meaning it can be a load or store, saying whether uh, load store uh, data fetch had any uh, uh, translation miss, whether the um, the, whether it, the memory came from uh, whether the local L cache, L1, L2, L3, or local memory. Uh, this has some amount of information to tell you uh, what kind of um, uh, stalls we had and uh, how, ma how many cycles it had, because uh, it also gives you the latency uh, of uh, miss to reload. So that gives you a lot of information on uh, um, uh, where the data came com coming from and uh, how long it took to get the data and put it in there. So uh, this has some amount of plumbing to get uh, some of the information for um, uh, load and store instructions, right? So now um, uh, can we extend uh, uh, the uh, perf mem data source to include more of the hazard data? So uh, one of the key things is that uh, uh, perf mem data source is primarily intended for uh, load stores and it also has uh, it also uh, uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, to say it also has uh, or or committed with uh, so many information in case of uh, the levels of the uh, memory, the mechanism of uh, logs uh, exposing, exporting the log information, or uh, even for the um, data that's coming from uh, different ops, whether it can be an uh, 
uh, load or store things in there. So um, when if you want to add more or overload that to further to include a pipeline stage or a reason, we, had, we don't have enough bits in there and uh, that could complicate uh, some more uh, handling in case of uh, flexibility to give you what are the stages that you want to predict. So one of the, so the proposal here is to see whether we can actually look at uh, a different uh, way of doing things, right? So can we have a, a different structure with which, with which we can collect more information from the hardware source and uh, get the same uh, with uh, a specific format, like what we had in uh, our data source, we have a format and that gives you option to uh, collect all the uh, hazard based information along with other uh, options from Puff Record. So uh, I did a sample uh, implementation in uh, Power to get the same data in case of uh, hazard. So this is a, a, a Puff report with uh, information of uh, getting a small workload where we, uh, where I made sure that we don't have multiple, uh, same instruction having multiple hazards or same instruction does not appear two times in the same record file. Right? So uh, this thereby I also have different uh, sort sequence. I in included a couple of uh, new uh, slot sequence to say, okay, I want to uh, arrange it in based of the instruction class or what are the hazard stages it went in or uh, what, what kind of a reason or it is and whether the instruction had any stalls and if it is stalls, what is the reason for the stall is. So this uh, this prime this uh, will get you information on how the uh, application or how the current uh, uh, workload is looking at, but uh, this can be enhanced with uh, uh, Puff Annotate, where we uh, um, where we currently give you information on uh, uh, the cycles along with uh, the instruction and mnemonic. So in case of ABR, we also provide uh, an option another column where we give the cycles that took uh, for the, from the previous branch to this. Uh, in case of hazard, we can actually include uh, whether the instruction had any hazards in the uh, pipeline, which it caused and which, which it came out from. So uh, this is the core data structure that I'm proposing uh, to see whether we can include uh, the uh, hazard information in there. So primarily it has a class information where it gives you um, whether the instruction is a load store instruction or it's a branch or it's a vector. Uh, it can also have um, uh, type, whether it's a single cycle, multi-cycle instruction. Then uh, what is the hierarchy in case of iCache, where the data came from, I mean, where the instruction came from. Apart from that, uh, I, uh, I wanted to include uh, the hazard stages, that's basically the pipeline stage, where it is, or um, how it can be uh, categorized for different uh, pipeline units and the reasons for it. Now, uh, not all of these can be arc neutral, but some of these can be arc neutral. So uh, reason for is that uh, each arc has their own, uh, each process has their own pipeline stages and uh, we cannot combine, we cannot have a, um, a arc neutral way of explaining, saying that, okay, this is the set of um, uh, units we can going to get it, uh, and plug it and plugging in there is going to cause some breakage or um, uh, flexibility for the other arcs. But uh, 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 the reasons like uh, the iCache or the class of instruction can be a common way. So the method I'm proposing is to have a, um, um, a mixed version of having some of them to be arc neutral, but uh, some of them to be arc specific. So this way we can collect, we, uh, each arc will have the uh, capability to have their own uh, independent uh, mechanism to say what are the things they want to include, but uh, they can also fuse the other data along in the arc neutral way. Uh, so this, uh, questions? Couple, couple slides before you show the addresses. You mentioned the instruction marking. How uh -huh. that is done? I'm sorry? How do you, so I assume your registers need some instruction selections, right? Yeah. So, um, instruction marking? Yeah, how that is done? How do you select the targets? 
Okay, so uh, a hardware, I mean, uh, we can, from user space, we can have specific uh, opcodes, uh, event codes for the PMU. The uh, PMU unit then has a specific uh, hardware logic in there where it uh, takes that and uh, specifically randomizes which instruction to look for. You can either randomize it or you can specifically say this is the instruction type or class I want to look for, and then the process, and then the logic goes and looks through for uh, for the entire pipeline stage and gets you the data out. And that's it's provided using the SIER information. So the register event register gives you the data of what are the different uh, uh, stages it went in and whether it had any stalls, whether it has it had any uh, hazards in there. And IBS also does that. AMD IBS also has some of these capabilities built in. So yeah. So this uh, so this slide is to primarily to say uh, uh, to reach out to the community to say that whether if we have an approach of uh, doing an arc neutral and an arc specific uh, information gathering for uh, hazards in case of doing it because we. Uh, in case of um, perf mem, uh, we could able to generalize and uh, have an arc neutral way of getting all the data in the memory hierarchy, uh, which give you which gives you the data from say if it is an L2 or L3 and or most of the arc actually has that um, uh, cache hierarchy in there. So that becomes uh, easy to plug those information into it. But uh, say in case of uh, interrupt rigs, uh, which is specific to architecture, and uh, interrupt rigs basically captures the PT regs at the time of each interrupt and gives that information to the user space. And in this case, it's very specific to ARC and they have ARC specific data for each of them in there. So by uh, having a mixed method of doing it where we have both ARC uh, neutral and ARC specific, we could try to get um, both of these to be enabled and added for the puff hazard. So what are the enhancements? So um, one of the key things is that uh, we need to have a new format so that we can have a mechanism to capture that data which is specific to hazard. And uh, we also need to have a way in a command line to explain to the I mean, user to provide that, to say that, okay, we need uh, uh, hazard data to be captured, where in this case, uh, I used hyphen H, which was not used uh, previously. So there was um, matching in there, so I used it. and. Uh, I also added a um, um, sample type to provide the data to the um, kernel to capture the information in there. And in this case, I used um, a, a complete instruction, which is nothing but uh, a retired op in case of uh, Intel and AMD. So this gives you, this actually marks the instruction ran in a random way and start looking at the data coming out of that for each sample it gets. So this gives you an option to provide the uh, capture the data for each and every instruction it uh, looks for the pipeline in there. So I also added a support to dump the raw data from the uh, counter so that I can look for it if if it needs it as as uh, as we do it for other of other options in there. So currently, I mean, with PuffD, we have capability to dump all of the hazard information and then we can post process it using perf scripts or things in there. So uh, finally, uh, we have added a new mode uh, where it talks about uh, uh, hazard information, something similar to perf mem, uh, mem info which uh, categorizes the data to be uh, in a specific format to present it out in the uh, uh, user for user to get it out and present it in a nice way. And uh, it also has uh, different sort types to help out to say that, okay, I want it to be uh, in the direction of uh, other reasons or uh, stall reasons and uh, other cases for that. So this gives you a focused presentation of, on other data alone and gives the information to the user. So that's this is something that my legal team wanted to put me out there. So, uh, yeah. So, questions? Yeah. Sorry, the, uh, you're proposing putting these uh, pipeline stages in. Uh, you're proposing putting these pipeline stages in an arch-specific header. That seems to be assuming that uh, every single processor within an architecture is going to have the same <coughs> definitions for this thing. I'm sorry, I didn't get a question. So. Uh, what what makes the pipeline stages architecture specific rather than processor specific? 
Um, so um, uh, in case of uh, actress, so uh, since these are more of a, a, a super scalar, some of them doesn't support, uh, uh, say, vector for, uh, in, in case of Intel, Intel has AVX and uh, the wider pipeline in, information in there, but power doesn't support them or ARM doesn't support them. So these right, logic so in pipelines. I mean, I mean either is, 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 the, is the, if the intent is to get the raw data and just have that match your enumerations, mm -hmm. then you're going to have problems of incompatibility of encoding from one processor to another. Whereas if you're going to translate it into you know, an established enumeration, then why, why do you need to separate it out uh, into arches? I mean, so what if the uh, non-architecture specific uh, file has some enums that aren't used? Yeah, so I'm open for it. So we could have some abstraction on on, on all the stages that we want to do, and then we can then we can abstract it to say that these specific stages could be plugged in for the architecture in there. Yeah, that's another way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. So I see you kind of like providing <coughs> more sample information as compared with the existing one, which probably provide the average data. I want to understand how you're using this sampled result to actually improve the performance of your software. Uh, one thing is that you can actually, that gives you information on the current, uh, uh, so one example is that uh, that tail beam miss that may not happen frequently or in the next iteration. So uh, one way of looking at it is that some of the information that gives you information on what is the current load in the processor, and, but uh, in case of uh, when you look at data for, say, um, uh, cache mess or uh, uh, decache mess or L cache mess, that gives you where uh, the uh, location for the uh, your variables, things in there that can be optimized and pull it in, in there. So that gives uh, some of them, it doesn't, all of this doesn't map to all the uh, application performance, but some of them do map and some gives you what is the current load in the pipeline. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, I'm currently working on getting these data and processing it to see whether how much I can get in there. But uh, yeah, so uh, these could potentially uh, feed back to the compiler or a runtime to say that uh, what what are the things that we can actually plug in as a parameter to get it out in there. So my question is actually very similar to what uh, he asked, <coughs> but the thing is, how do you, uh, whatever issues you find as hazards, how do they always map to software issues versus hardware issues? Yeah, right. so as, as I said, so, uh, yeah. it, it, it doesn't map all each, uh, each of them uh, one-on-one -on -one mapping is, may not be there, but some of them too can, can be used to understand how the data structures that happens in there. So that way it could be very useful for like uh, a processor under development, for example. Um, and like and also at runtime you can understand how the processor is loaded and how it is in there and why it is cache miss is happening or why the TLB is missing in there. And my question is, is this work applicable to x86? Uh, it's, um, so one of the key information that we will need is the, uh, um, the hardware has to give you some amount of data to plumb it out. So in case of x86, they look at top-down model of having uh, performance analysis where they do uh, uh, the same categorization, but they get it, uh, doesn't have to, I mean, I don't know exactly whether I can speak for Intel, but uh, as far as my understanding, they don't have sampling mechanism to export this data to each sample. But uh, with the recent uh, processor out, they do have a metrics where for uh, specifically for uh, top-down metrics, where they give you percentage of how much the bad speculation happened, or how much the front-end stall was, how much the back-end stall, and uh, uh, what is your control loop in there. So that is that is something that also captures the hazard, uh, but that's more of a free com free running counters. It is it's not for each sample. Yeah, it's more averaged, uh, and you cannot um, uh, distribute it uh, through the code which is running and to associate it with it? Uh, we can associate it with it, but uh, you cannot look at it for, uh, say, a different uh, time zone, I mean, a different time in the pipe, in the uh, application running. So when you are running it, when you're running, when you're doing sampling, you periodically interrupt to see how much you, what is the state of it and gets in there. But in case of free rounding counters, you actually look at it on every uh, uh, context switch or primarily in a context switch or at the end of it and things in there. Okay, thank you. So to, I want to, to 
continue uh, on your uh, on your question. The top down that he's that he's talking about is uh, the Intel top down is a characterization uh, methodology. It tells you you have 20% front end bound or something like this. Uh, now, if you say you want to know where, then you need to sample. And to the problem is that often what happens is that to, to collect a metric like front end bound, you may have to combine multiple events to get that metric. And you cannot sample on a difference of events or a, an addition of events, okay? so. The top-down, they're trying to improve this, and if you look at the top-down uh, spreadsheet, you will see that there is a way, they, they try to map you, say, hey, if you want to figure out where you have front-end bound, then you try to sample on this event. They give you an event that you can sample, a single event where you can sample on. Uh, okay. Now to get back to uh, this presentation, I think you need to, to validate it by s trying to support the AMD IBS. That would validate this yeah. approach, right? Say, hey, I can reuse it in more than on more than one architecture. Right? And that that would be a useful thing to do, because right now the IBS is exported raw, so you don't have that level of uh, information. It's it's raw. Um, so yeah, that could be one thing which uh, I will look at when I post the RFC patches for all these things, so that I can capture it. The thing that I'm worried about about this kind of output is say, hey, is the instruction at the top? the one I need to focus my attention on? Is it the one that is causing me the most trouble? And I don't think you can conclude from this that this is the one that is causing the most trouble. But, uh, 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 but uh, yeah, uh, in some cases we need to have uh, even the de uh, mem data also. Yeah, so this doesn't include the cycles along with uh, the penalty, what you're talking about, yeah. Because of this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that is something IBS. Yeah. But uh, IBS, I think uh, yeah, AMD IBS does gives you information on, uh, same, yeah. More questions? If not, let's thank the speaker and don't eat up too much of the lunch. The other guys need to have some. Cool.